am 100% certain that uh, the insiders are filling their boots with silver and, and uh, really ultimately this, there's a huge upside for silver. Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcade Economics. And tonight it is part two of this month's call with Andrew McGuire where he talks about the COMEX deliveries and what does it really mean, how he interprets those. And also he gives his silver forecast for 2021, which I think you're gonna be happy to hear and see. So with that said, here is part two with Andrew McGuire. Another question I've gotten, it's been quite a, we've had a couple analysts discuss this over the past uh, few weeks. Love to get your take. We hear a lot about these COMEX deliveries Although Bob Coleman raised a good point, is any metal leaving the building? Certainly if metal was leaving the building, that would take another level of significance in my mind. And I think it was in July when you came on, remember there was that first day where JP Morgan delivers 30 million ounces. They had 160 and it went to 30 and 130. Now I see JP Morgan, <laughs> of course their pie is growing bigger. Now this metal is still sitting there. So in terms of these deliveries, what can people really take away when they see these numbers? What does it mean? You know, what, what does it mean that this really shifted? Is that just paper warrant switching hands? Uh, a lot of people are looking at the big numbers. Uh, what would you say there? Yeah, it is, it is, it is. Um, uh, but I, it was also seeing a lot of competition. And if you know, if you remember, we, 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 we all know, of course, JP Morgan's been the, 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 the mammoth um, um, physical, uh, calling the physical market. And then, uh, then if you remember, then a um, couple of, I think a couple of months ago, we brought in, um, uh, you know, actual evidence that, um, that uh, we have another very large uh, whale buyer on the COMEX. And uh, we covered that. And, um, there's some competition there. Um, everybody knows that silver is undervalued. Um, and again, the same people that are valuing gold at 500 above this price are valuing silver at 35 bucks at a minimum. Uh, and, and that before anyone would even think about selling a, a wholesale ounce in any size. Uh, so there's everybody sitting on physical bullion and, and of course what you're seeing though is the shuffling of warrants no one wants the stuff to leave they're not going to actually sell this stuff out of the comex and and i think you'll find that silver and i was referring to silver being in contango all the time why is it can in contango what they're doing is establishing the comex as the price setter so if it's going to cost me 17 18 cents and as the prices rise, you watch that contango build to 25 cents. Why would I then pay that much of a higher price? Um, because it's actually being, so it's, it's on purpose being uh, the contango is, and it will never go away. Believe me, that contango will never go away. Because if they made the mistake of what they did with gold and put it into backwardation, although we had one day last week um, where silver, in, in fact, into the Bank of International Settlements low of 1766 or gold, uh, we saw a technical four cent backwardation in, um, in, gold, in silver, in March silver. That's evaporated pretty quick because people would have jumped all over it. But that was only a technical backwardation. We're never going to see that again. And the reason is because these guys have cornered the market, they've cornered the silver market, they're, they're buying physical as much physical as they can, they're storing as much physical as they can, uh, but what it does enable you to do to a certain extent, of course, is um, you can then, once you've got the physical, you can legitimately sell shorts again, it's against it. Now, if you're in a, if you're in a, a position of, whether you have a concentrated position, then you can use that to your advantage, sure as hell can, because even though you have uh, this physical, um, if, because you've got this physical, um, you can actually go and put in a hell of a lot of short contracts um, on, on the basis that you, you know that but once you've targeted the stops that are on your book that you can see there, all you have to do is go through a moving average. And, and we saw that in, in the last 10, uh, last four months, 
we saw a huge, huge attempt to get uh, to use that power of concentration um, to really move the silver debt lower. But we also saw, interestingly, we saw very little interest to sell anything. We saw the swap dealers, we saw the, and even though bear in mind this, the CRT report is not just, it's a one-sided report. There's the other side of that report is the over the counter market, which is 10 times larger. But this contango, that's exactly the reason why this contango in silver is there. Comex has become the price setter for silver. So yeah, you'll see nothing leave, um, but there'll come a point where um, even a 25 cents contango will become attractive because there isn't enough silver. And when there comes a point when there isn't any silver uh, to buy in the wholesale market, or isn't sufficient to fill orders that are there, then you will actually go and pay your 25 cents over. It doesn't matter because you know that ultimately the buyer is actually saying, I don't care, I'll pay the premium. Um, and we also know that, um, that a lot of premiums are being paid by these banks to bring silver in from various parts of the world at enormous premiums. So I think that's an interesting situation in silver. It's quite different to gold. Um, and I think you, 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 that's why you're not gonna see anything leave um, at this point. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And in terms of, I mean, you've described today in our call, a lot of the things that are happening and building something, perhaps a nice holiday present for everyone. What does Andrew McGuire see happening to silver in 2021? Well, I see silver, I mean, silver is so undervalued and bearing in mind that you have uh, a, all the big boys, long physical silver. They're not long physical silver just to gain the market. They're long physical silver because they know that it is deeply undervalued and they're going to make a lot of money on the upside. And, um, you know, this, the, you know, silver is obviously an, an important subject for us because um, it, usually you see the games going on in silver. Um, it's a much smaller market. It's the same actors. Um, and really, you can guarantee that all these same actors, JP Morgan, etc., uh, are definitely Goldman. Uh, they're all also very, very active in the gold market and, and extremely long in the gold market because they know this <laughs> you came physical and the physical is going to go up in price. And I think, you know, we have, we have, there, there's so many shades of gray here. Um, it, under Basel three rules, which will commence being Im implemented uh, during the nine month period after March of this tw of 21 through to January 20, 2022. And I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be quite an interesting situation because, and this affects silver too, leasing gold, it won't any longer be a viable proposition for bullion banks. And this is due to the adverse treatment of gold on the balance sheet under Basel III. So bottom line, cash has a required stable fund rating. It's an RSF number of 0%, whereas a more difficult, say, to liquidate asset as an RSF of 100. So obviously... Uh, gold, really, we know that physical gold should be uh, as equivalent to cash. But in simple terms, what's going to happen is going to really affect, this is, bottom line, this is going to raise the price of gold. And in simple terms, the risk weighting on gold rises from 50% to 85%. And of course, this would disincentivize the leasing of unallocated or fiat gold. Leasing gold has become a major profit source for the closed cartel of bullion banks and central bankers. In fact, Scotia Mercata, talking of silver, is exiting the bullion bank space in just 23 days from now. And we think they have a net short position, which should be beneficial. Now we see more bullion banks following Scotia Mercata. However, we know and looked at, I remember looked at this in previous Arcadia episodes, there's far more to the Scotia story, we know that. Um, than the implementation of Basel III, which is going to be, this is the excuse being given. Um, now, increasing regulations and forced transparency has begun lifting the stone off a cesspit, cesspit of inhabited by some of the worst actors operating in this space. Now, Deutsche Bank has exited bullion banking for the same reasons, and more bullion banks are going to follow. Now, the banks that remain will lose money if they do not increase their financing rates. 
Now, if a bank cannot earn a sufficient return on its gold assets to cover the cost of funding, then it doesn't make sense to own any gold. Well, unallocated gold, that is. The fact, I mean, really, this fact puts a flaw under the, uh, under the rate banks require when leasing or lending gold. Now, this means that producers and refiners which is where the plain vanilla bullion banking profits lay, will be faced with higher borrowing costs. Now, this opens a once siloed trade to cheaper, more aggressive Chinese and Russian banks, as well as private money financing. However, this is where it gets really interesting, Chris. To eliminate this haircut, this form of financing will be forced to be 100% physical only, and there'll be far less unallocated gold to dilute the price. Now, it is the leveraging of finance gold positions that has ultimately been underwritten by officials adopting a naked short paper gold position to ensure that their index positions stay inside a managed range, which is what we've seen for the last 50 years. However, this paper game, as we know, blew up on March the 23rd of this year. This has given rise to several initiatives by the LVMA and the CME ringmasters to try and ring fence the up till now paper to physical game, which is kind of what we were just talking about. But uh, bottom line, plain vanilla bullion banking without an inside track is simply not profitable without rigging the game. And one can only rig the game by disrupting true supply demand fundamentals by injecting these tsunamis of undeliverable paper gold at these important inflection points. And in sort of really, uh, it, we, we, we kind of discussed the, the, the PSYOPs operation. So that, that's pretty much what that, that was. But I mean, really, really when we, we look at the, um, the, the, the bullion, the, the Basel III situation, um, it's, 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 it's going to be, um, it's going to be very, very bullish for gold because, you know, hedging, this is, I mean, really sort of, it's, it's a really difficult subject, really. Um, so despite the LBMA seeking to continue to allow unallocated gold to be weighted as cash, what we would rather see is a move by central banks, sovereigns and asset managed managers to secure physical gold which carries exactly the same zero risk rating as cash. Now, whereas the LBMA is trying to continue to spin this yarn that fractionally held physical gold, even when it's funded by a gold liability, which is obviously that's a short futures position or a gold swap, uh, that they, they should be exempt from any funding haircut. However, Basel III rules are designed to eliminate counterparty risk going forward. I, I just cannot see this washing. And currently banks who own physical and sell futures to make a small spread is what that's about. Now, in this case, banks do not need to reserve extra funding for gold as the market risk of the gold price is hedged. Now, this would be fine if real physical were being hedged one-to-one. -one. However, the bulk of the 15 trillion year gold market cleared by the LPMCL in, unallocate, in unallocated fractionally held form, netted out amongst the small groups of member banks is what we're talking about here. That doesn't add up. And this is, it's such a nonsense as such liabilities do incur counterparty risk. And therein lays the problem for the cartel. Currently, a gold asset is counted as a long fractionally held over the counter unallocated gold position when hedged with a futures contract. But that's little more than fiat gold hedging a first tier asset. So that still requires a haircut. And it was, it was a rush for physical gold backing this fiat gold that already blew up the EFB conduit in March. And the new rules will require a provable one-to-one -one ratio. I mean, gold is the primary benchmark that faces all fiat currencies. It must be remembered that paper gold is not a first-tier asset, only fully allocated physical bullion that has no counterparty risk. Uh, has uh, has uh, will, will will actually qualify. So, Basel III rules coming into effect in March will eliminate any valuation haircuts, and this is important as it will drive a much more physical market. But this is where it also gets very interesting because 
the changes come into effect just as the CME LBMA unallocated fractional gold cartel is under attack, right where it hurts, which is what we're talking about now. Their unallocated price physical bullion stocks are under attack from a market starved of immediately deliverable bullion. This has never happened before. Now cornered and physical markets are starting to deallocate paper gold into allocated gold and to increasingly trade this off the LBMA and the CME exchanges. This is already happening. Now the LBMA has stepped up the ante by trying to ring fence this paper market game. However, as we said, it's going to backfire. Wholesalers probably give it three to six months maximum. Now under these rules, now this is, this is again very important because this is the art of war. Under these rules, essentially every central bank will be able to revalue its physical reserves higher from 50% haircut to fully cash exchangeable asset, physical that is. Now the idea that central banks will be able to pay off massive swathes of debt by revaluing gold, not just from a cash asset, but also it would behove central banks to revalue the dollar price of gold as well as that. And this likely is when we see 2,500 gold triggered, uh, triggering such a revaluation. We figure that's the level. But we also think that every central bank will want a higher price. Now, if you look at the 8,130 tons of officially held US gold, that's offset by further, when you offset that with further fresh money printing, which is coming down the pike, even at current prices, that's likely probably five trillion could be realized. I mean, you could pay off some debt with that, but this also raises another question. How much of these US gold holdings are rehypothecated already? We only have to look at the shenanigans around the 300 tons of German repatriation requests in 2013 to raise these questions. Give me a, give me a head of shake, seven years to repay that. Uh, so, you know, bottom line, this is the time for China to disclose its estimated 25,000 tons or more of gold this would be the ultimate and winning art of war to me. Yeah, sure will be interesting. I get a lot of interesting estimates of how much gold China has. <clears throat> I guess what I would say uh, without going too far off the reservation, I feel pretty comfortable, whatever it is, it's a lot more than what's in Fort Knox. Although Andrew, you mentioned unallocated gold and a lot of the schemes that go on. Perhaps uh, last one I got for you here, and maybe Fort Knox officials uh, get out your pencils because oh, what, what is, what is it? it's an audit. Oh my God, Kinesis. Wait, so you guys actually hired someone, an outside party to confirm that the metal is there as advertised. Andrew, again, a lot of us are Americans. We've grown up with Fort Knox where they refuse an audit and leave you wondering whether it's there so I appreciate you did this. Perhaps uh, you could tell folks a little bit about what we have here. Yeah, and, and, and of course, it is, it is critical that, um, that, uh, that when you're dealing with, with digital gold, especially, or if you're dealing with gold in any, uh, in any sort of uh, situation, you have to, if it's not in your direct possession, you need to be 100% certain that it is definitely there and in your name and so essentially by providing you need to, when you do an, an audit it's not an audit unless you you send it out to a um, a proper firm to do that a trusted firm that is accepted by every insurance company and accepted by the biggest and the best so obviously that happened uh, it is a regular thing we do we want to provide assurance to everyone that uh, when you um you know because i'm really I'm so pleased to see global willingness to readopt uh, gold and silver as an everyday money and digitizing it has provided the key, but you need to know this, does, this gold doesn't exist in cyberspace. And, and ultimately we're gonna show it, really go through, we're gonna create a, a really great video where we're gonna go to our Liechtenstein vaults and we're gonna show this bullion sitting in the vaults and we're gonna show how these bars move uh, these, these bars morph into digital but don't move they stay in the vault and they morph into a digital currency which then can be held on your wallet but the gold and the silver is still sitting right on the pallet in your name so 
this is it, it, unless you have that third party attestation that it is actually there um then obviously you're not going to have full confidence in using a system like that so really it's all about digitizing our gold and silver becoming part of a solution here in it, 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 you've obviously got to digitize your gold and silver or you can't use it as an everyday currency um and so really we just want to be sure that we are able to provide that assurance to people that it is there and look if you it, the other thing to do is is drop in um and uh, on the website uh look at where we are on the roadmap um that on the, the roadmap also had that um had that uh, that we, we were we were advising that these audits were coming up it was on the roadmap it was it was hit uh, we also show indonesian rollout that's in progress um, we, we, we look at the, on the roadmap, the platform and exchange redevelopment, uh, the virtual uh, visa card launch, uh, the US Kinesis visa card launch. I mean, all of these things are on the roadmap. I should really suggest you go on the roadmap and have a look. But yeah, part of that, part of that is regular audits. Yeah, well, Andrew, I sure appreciate you doing business essentially in the exact opposite fashion of the US government which is something that investors, citizens, people who love freedom or just honest life everywhere can benefit from. So I thank you again for joining me uh, as we wrap up 2020 and get ready for an exciting next year. We'll see what the COMEX is looking like a year from now. In either case, I'll look forward to covering it with you every month. And thanks again for being here. Hey, no, it's great. And, and, and let me finish. Silver, silver is, I mean, I am 100% certain that uh, the insiders are filling their boots with silver. And, and uh, really, ultimately, this, there's a huge upside for silver. And uh, I know that a lot of people have been psyched out of thinking it'll ever rise. I mean, really, um, it, it, when, when silver moves, it moves very, very quickly. And I, I, if anyone was focusing on anything right now, I'd be focusing on silver at 35 bucks. And um, that's just not a number pulled out of the air. Uh, that's a number which, which I know uh, has to be achieved. Uh, it's a gap close basically from 2012 and it will, it'll be filled. Well, geez, there's a darn reason to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell or get your copy of the big silver short for Christmas where you can hear Andrew's chapter in there which was quite stunning. And in wrapping up, uh, in case anyone wants to know what's happening on the retail physical level, well, this week's call with Andy Shechno and Miles Franklin is coming your way now.